Hey there everybody, thought we would do a different video, kind of different from what I've done before, uh, but some of the instructional videos seem to be uh, well received, so I thought I would do a quick uh, practical 3D design using uh, FreeCAD and tools to show you how to do a, a, a quick functional 3D design. Uh, so our design today is going to be based on using a flashlight like this. Uh, these LED flashlights are quite cheap. You can get them in a lot of different places. Uh, this one comes from the local Dollarama. Uh, I paid four dollars for it. Uh, so it's just a straight LED flashlight. But these usually inside, take it apart, use these packages of uh, three AAA batteries in a holder. However, they also can fit one of these, an 18650 cell. You can see that also fits in and turns it on. But as you can tell, it's loose in there. So what we want to do is we actually want to design something like this. This is a sleeve that fits around and keeps the battery from rolling around. And one of the best tools that you can use when you're doing 3D design is something like this. This is a set of calibers. These are digital calibers. And they allow us to measure quite accurately uh, the spaces that we need. So, um, what I'm going to do is I'll show you how to do that. First, what we're going to do is go over to FreeCAD, and I uh, can see here this is the starting screen, and we're going to create a new document. And in this new document, I'm going to come up here. These are the different workbenches, and the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to the spreadsheet. Now, this is not the normal way that a lot of people work, but uh, it's one of the more efficient ways to, especially when you have larger documents, to work through. Uh, doing things in FreeCAD. So I'm going to start a spreadsheet and click on this button here to create a new spreadsheet. So you can see here, here's my new spreadsheet. And I'll double click and open it up. And the three dimensions that we need in order to make this project are going to be the inside diameter. So that's the diameter here on the inside of this hole. We're going to need the outside diameter. So that's the diameter around the cell. And we're going to need the height. And that's how long the cell is. Now an 18650 cell is supposed to be 18 millimeters wide and 650 millimeters high. That's the standard for it. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to use the calibers just to demonstrate that. So, we'll take our calipers first, and calipers have two measuring faces. This is for measuring on the outside of objects, this is for measuring on the inside of objects. So we're just going to use that to measure on the inside here. So if I measure on the inside there, you can see that this is 23 millimeters on the inside. Now, when you 3D print things, if you make them exactly 23 millimeters, it will be too tight, likely, because uh, 3D printers have what they call elephant's foot, uh, if they're not tuned exactly perfectly. Plus, as you can see on this one, there's facets, so those facets end up making it a little bit wider, uh, because no 3D printer is, makes perfect circles. Uh, it's, just a, it's a factor of the stepping of the stepper motors. They don't have an infinite resolution. Uh, you can also see here there's a bit of a Z-seam. This is a seam where the printer stops printing each layer. So if I measure the outside diameter of this, it's almost, it's 22.8. Okay. 
Okay, so it's roughly 0.2 of a millimeter smaller. If I roll it around so I can catch some of this off, 22.9. So that's pretty close. All right, so what we're going to do is over here in our software, we're going to say the inside diameter, that's the diameter of this space here, is, let's go with 22 millimeters. Okay, because you notice we measured 22.8, we'll just go with 22. That could give us up to a half of a millimeter on either side. Okay, so the next one was the outside diameter. We measure that. And remember, this is an 18, 650 cell, it's supposed to be 18 millimeters, but we're measuring 18.3, right, all the way up. And you can also notice that there's a bit of a bulge on this end here. So I'll show you on this one that I made earlier. It's very tight, but it catches actually. Right here, there's a little lip from this is the side that was on the print bed. I can print it like that. So it has a little bit of an elephant's foot on the inside and it catches on that little swell on the, on the cell, okay? So we measured 18.4. If I measure the inside down here, you can see it's 18.6, right? 17.18.6, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make that inside hole a little bigger than our 18, and we're gonna let's make it 19 millimeters. And the last thing we need is this up here. I'm gonna be very careful because this is a metallic set of calibers. So this is 65.41 millimeters. Okay. So we need something just a little longer than the 65 that it's supposed to be. You can see this one here, printed at 65. So if this is a little short, it actually won't matter. Right? It could be a little short. What we need is it to hold that end. So we're actually going to use 65 millimeters as our height. So now we're done with our measuring tools. We come back over here to FreeCAD, and you can see that I've got our three dimensions in. So I'm going to go into this cell here and right-click and hit Properties. And what I want to do is I want to give it an alias. So this one we're going to call inside diameter. This one we're going to call outside oh, inside cell. Outside diameter. And we'll properties, alias, and this one I'm going to call this. Let's call it cell height. These all have to be names that we remember. Um, they cannot have spaces in them. You can use underscores. I just revert back to my old programming days and use capitals to define the starting of words. And we hit OK. So there we have our three dimensions. Now we're going to go back here to our 3D drawing plane. And I'm going to switch workbenches to the part design workbench. So we have a blank page. You can see here in part design it actually gives us our list of tasks. So I went back and I clicked on just the, the whole start of the document. So we want to create a body. A body is the uh, definition of an individual 3D part in part design. So we create a body. Now we have a body. Look here you can see there's a body. Now we want to use a sketch. A sketch is a two-dimensional re rendering of one dimension of your project, and it's what we start with. So if I create a sketch, I now have the option of choosing my base plane. You can see here, top is this plane, the right is this plane, and the front is this plane. Now because we're printing on a 3D printer, we want it to, the, the top is the view down. It's the view you have here on the camera. So I use the top view, then I can define this object like this. And if I draw it from the top plane, that is the way it's going to show up in our in our uh, slicing software as well. So I'm going to use the top plane, and I hit OK. So if you look at this part, it looks like two different circles, an inside circle and an outside circle. So we're going to use this here. This is the circle tool. And 
The circle is defined by two points, as you can see right here, a center and an edge. Now, anytime you're drawing in, in CAD, you need to define everything. Every, it's a parametric model, so everything has to have a parameter. And one of those parameters is where the center is. I could draw my circle way up here, but what I'm going to do in order to uh, speed, speed the process is I'm going to hover my cursor over the top, and you'll notice that there's this little crosshair beside the circle. There's a dot with four pieces. That means that these two dots are linked together. They're aligned. So the center of the circle is now aligned to the center of my drawing plane. So I'm going to click down and hold my mouse, and then I'm going to pull out. There's one circle. And click. I'm going to click on the center again, and bring out my second circle, and click. So there's our two circles. So now we've finished our drawing, but if you look up here, there's two degrees of freedom. We've already gotten rid of the degrees of freedom to move the center of the circle, so the two degrees are actually the diameters of the circle. This top bar here, you recognize this symbol here? Right? This is the one that created co coincident constraint on the selected item, so the two dots are co coincident. That's what we showed in the automatic one. We go all the way across to this one here. This is our radius and diameter. I'm going to click on this little down area and say we're going to constrain the diameter. And we're going to click on this inside circle. You can see this inside circle is actually 25.85 millimeters wide. And it's gone blue because we just told it to make it that wide. But that's not how we, wide we wanted it. Okay, We're going to click on this formula bar and we're going to type spreadsheet because we're going to reference the spreadsheet. And remember we called this inside circle is the outside diameter. So if I start typing out, there's outside diameter. And you can see now it has filled in our 19 millimeters. Hit OK. Hit OK, and now this is 19 millimeters. If I had a 3D drawing that had a lot of different um, places where we're using the same measurement, if I wanted to change that measurement, say it was a little bit off, I would have to go through and change each individual one. But by using the spreadsheet, I only have to change it once because I can refer to it from everything else. So now we'll pick this circle, we'll do the same thing. Spreadsheet, and this is the inside diameter, 22, we hit OK, and hit OK. You can see now we have our two circles. Okay. If I hold down my middle mouse button, you can see this is just a drawing. Okay. We've got it all fully constrained, it's all green, it's just fully constrained here, we hit close. There's our sketch. Go to our model, you can see we have our sketch selected. So the next thing we want to do is we want to give it some height. So this is the button here, called padding sometimes called lofting, we're going to pad this sketch. You can see it's already padded it up 10 millimeters, but we want it taller than that, and we already have a measurement for that. So again, we'll go into the formula, spreadsheet, and we made it the height, didn't we? What did we call that? We called that a cell height. So, we'll go back here. We've got a cell height, there it is, 65 millimeters, and there we go. We hit OK. There is our simple drawing. So let's save it. File, save as, and we're going to call this 18650 sleeve. Okay, so we've saved it, but that, if I open up my browser here, right here, that is a free CAD file. Okay, the free CAD file is not 3D printable. And we're going to use uh, the slicer for my 3D printer for this, but we need an STL file. So I'm going to click on the body, make it really highlighted, go to File, Export. Now you'll see I'm exporting it as an STL mesh, and it's picked up my file name, 1860 sleeve, and then it's put on the part number body, or the part name body. So I'm going to hit Save. Now I have an STL file. So I switch over to Ultimaker. That's the slicer I use for my 3D printer. And I open up. Here it is, 1860 sleeve body. Open that, and you can see it's already come in, centered on the print bed, oriented the way we wanted it. I already have all my settings set, so if I hit slice, it'll take 29 minutes to print that. So I would save that out to my SD card, put it in my printer, print it, and in probably 30 to 31 minutes, because it 
this doesn't take into account heating the bed and heating the, the print head. It would print it out, and I would take it out, and then we'd have this piece. As you can see, we would have a piece like this. And I could just drop in, drop in my 18650 cell. have a functional print. So that's a very simple example, but I hope you found it helpful, uh, the process that we go through. Um, the next print process that we're going to try and do is um, I get these 18650 cells out of power banks at the same dollar store where I got the flashlight for four dollars. The power banks have in them a lithium-ion charging block, a little circuit that will take USB connector and charge up your 18650 cell because right now I have this cell in here but I have no way to charge it so what we're going to do is we're going to build a portable charger that we can plug that battery into and recharge it when it gets low thanks for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe to this video and we'll see you on the next one